Greetings folks and welcome back to Femboy Mathematics. I'm Tree and today we're gonna be, or rather in this episode, we're gonna be discussing about the Pythagorean Theorem or the Pythagorean Theorem. Whichever way you guys pronounce it, we're discussing it in this episode. Now after this episode's recording, I'm gonna be recording an extras episode on linear algebra. I suppose I will be uploading these two videos as extras episode and this episode episode six i think or seven i'm gonna be uploading these videos simultaneously so after first this is uploaded i'm gonna upload the next but put it in a different playlist so that it won't confuse the timeline on the original season one playlist so today we're going to be talking about the pythagorean theorem now before i talk about it i would like to differentiate or um remind you guys or help you guys remember the difference between an acute angle a right angle and an obtuse angle so an acute angle is basically an angle that's below 90 degrees so this over here is an acute angle or an example of an acute angle wherein it is that it's not really 90 degrees worth of arc so this over here is an acute angle so from 1 degrees to 89 degrees those are acute angles and now this over here this is a right angle i it kind of doesn't it doesn't matter if it kind of doesn't look like one but this is a right angle and it's basically an angle that's 90 degrees and it is shown to be 90 degrees if this box here appears on the bottom and over here on the further part is an obtuse angle this is an obtuse angle and an obtuse angle is basically an angle that's beyond 90 degrees. So, moving past those knowing that, let's talk about right triangles and the, Pyth the Pythagorean theorem. So, basically, if you're given a right triangle, let's say this is a right triangle, and the box appears down here to signify that it is a right triangle. Because if it isn't a right triangle, we're gonna be have we're gonna have to use law of sines or law of cosines to solve it, and I'll be discussing about those in a in a different episode or an extras episode. So basically, you have your right triangle and A and B are your legs, and C is your hypotenuse. So basically, what Pythago what the Pythagorean theorem states is a squared plus b squared equals c squared now this theorem was made by pythagoras himself the greek mathematician and this is a way for us to calculate or to find out the length of one side given two other sides and it is known by this theory now a side theory or side theorem that i'd like to discuss that's really similar to this one is Fermat's last theorem. So that's x to the n plus y to the n equals z to the n. Now the reason I'm discussing Fermat's last theorem is because it's the it's almost similar to the Pythagorean theorem except it's a more generalized form. Now here we only have degrees or exponents of two, while here it could be any exponent. So basically here in Fermat's theorem, Fermat's last theorem we're looking for numbers wherein if given the same exponents they would equal but of course here we're just talking about squared this one here is an entirely different topic but I would just like to point that these are almost directly similar so how do we find out how do we find out C or A or B given other two sides so Basically, we just do some basic algebra. So I'm going to have to erase this and move it to a different part of the board so we have more space to calculate. So let's say we're given... Uh, oh my, I'm running out of ink. Oh no. Let's say we're given this right triangle over here and we have our legs a and b and our hypotenuse c which is supposed to be the longest side 
so let's say that a is 150 b is 90 and c we don't know c so how do you find c so basically we just plug these two numbers into the equation so 150 squared plus 90 squared equals c squared so what we do then is just add add like terms so using our calculator let me just put that here. using our calculator um so 150 plus 90 that would be 240 240 squared equals c squared so then how do we how do we find out how do we find out so basically we just do what we need to do so we have to find the square root of this of c to find or to eliminate the square symbol and that would be the square root of 240 it's the square root of 240 um, so that would be 15.491933338 or just simply if we're going to round it off to two decimal places, 15.49. C is 15.49. Now since we didn't plug all numbers, we're only given a rough estimate if we check the, the, the numbers to see if they equal. We're only given a rough estimate. So let's use let's go and use a different example. Let's use a different example. Let's see we're given this right triangle over here. C, A, and B. Let's say that A is um ten and B is fifty. And C, or actually, let's let's try to find a different one. Let's say we're given C is already given. Let's say C is already given. C this time is eighty. Let's make B as the unknown, and A is equal to fifty. So then, how do we know? How do we find out? So basically, we just plug it into the equation. So fifty squared plus B equals 180 squared. So then we just do the necessary algebra. So we transfer to the other side. So B is equal to 180 squared minus 50 squared. So B would be, or B squared actually, would be the square root of 130 and the square root of 130 according to my calculator is 11.40 sorry if it's not quite seen in the board but it's 11.40 or to be precise 11.40175425 so basically this is the basics when it comes to um, the Pythagorean theorem I guess I'm going to go ahead and record the extras episode when it comes to linear algebra. I'll be using the same outfit, I suppose. And so I guess I'll see you guys in the next episode or in the extras episode.